Hi, in this video, I show you how to use this electronic dropper system to create these amazing water drop photographs. Hi, I'm Adam and welcome to First Man Photography. And before we get into the video, if you haven't done so already, head over to firstmanphotography.com, fill in your details to join the email list and I'll send you a free copy of the ebook on how to capture perfect exposure every time. Okay, let's get into this. In a previous video, I covered how to do water drop photography, and I'll link that up to you there and down below in the description. And if you haven't seen that, check that out first. Now in that video, I covered how to do water drop photography with a basic setup, and then touch briefly on using this, the Splash Art 2 electronic dropper system. And I've had a few questions coming in asking how to use this system in a bit more detail. Many of you have spent your hard earned money and time buying this water drop system. So I wanted to go into it in a bit more detail to help you take your water drop photographs to the next level. So we're going to go through a bit of a photo shoot on capturing water drop images. And I'll show you how I use the system, the fine tuning I do during the shoot and just generally how I make this work for me and then hopefully you can make it work for you too. So to go through the system, we have the water bath here where you put your liquid that is gonna form the drops. That comes through this solenoid out of the nozzle here and then splashes into your water bath where we then capture these amazing water drop photographs. It's very simply on a clamp stand and then it's this little electronic box here that does the magic. Now we have a series of knobs that I will go through during the shoot um, but they're also they're connected to the camera and to the dropper and that fires the camera for you So I'll set up the studio and then we'll get into our shoot So here we are and we're all set up and I'll just go through the setup quickly here We have the water dropper and I've got the bath here with some milk and Xanthan gum in and I've put a blue food coloring into that now Let's just go through the control unit first. So this is the control unit and to talk through the knobs from left to right and top to bottom. First one on the left controls the first drop size because it comes through the solenoid and that can control the drops. So the second knob controls the amount of time between each drop. And we're talking about very fine adjustments here, but that's important to be able to do that to get those nice drop collisions. The third one from the left controls the size of the second drop. So you start putting all these things together and this is how we control our water drops. So that button knob controls the delay between when you press the button on the control panel to when it fires the camera. So just to talk about the liquids we put in for a minute. Once you've got your settings and you're capturing some really nice water drops, if you change the consistency of your liquid at all, then you'll have to change the settings on your control panel because with the different consistencies of liquids, it produces different speeds of drop, how they come out the end of the nozzle, and it'll adjust the settings that you need to still capture those water drop collisions. So today, like I said at the start, I'm using some milk in here with a little bit of water and xanthan gum. And it's the xanthan gum that really gives it that nice sort of plasticky feel almost that it looks like it's really set and stops little droplets spraying everywhere and gives you those nice rounded edges because it thickens the water a little bit and you really don't need a lot, but it really adds a really nice sheen to your water drops. So I've got my flashes, camera, everything set up and I'm ready to go. Another good tip just before we get into shooting is to have your camera via a USB cable tethered to your computer or laptop because then the images transfer through and you can see them nice and big on your screen. And that's a good tip every time you're shooting in the studio. Now the best place to start on the control panel is pretty much with all the knobs set at 11 o'clock. This has always been a good place to start and it's always worked well for me. And then you can make the fine adjustments to then start getting the collisions. So let's take our first shot. Okay, so as you can see from that first shot, I'm getting, I'm capturing the water drop sort of at the wrong time. It's too, probably the first drop is too big. So it's going way off the top of the screen. So I'm just gonna make a small adjustment on that first knob just to bring the size of that first drop down. Now on that second shot, what the camera has captured is not quite right. But when I was watching the water drop happen, I definitely saw a collision occur. So when that happens, you know it's probably a mistiming 
of when your camera is firing. So I'm going to now adjust the bottom knob to capture that water drop collision that did occur, it's just the camera didn't catch it. Okay, so third time lucky and I've captured my first collision. We're not quite there yet. It's not a bad image, but I want to do better. I want to get that nice crown across the top of my water drop. Let's take some more. Okay, so there we are. We've caught our first proper water drop collision and I'm really starting to like the look of what I'm getting here. So I'm just going to have a play around, take a few more images and see what else I can come up with. So between each image, I'm just making really fine adjustments at the moment, just on that delay knob. Um, I might in a minute start to make a few adjustments on the timing in the middle between the two drops to see what effect that has. What this is about is about trial and error all the way through what you're doing. So I'm going to do some more and try again. Now that last one is a classic example of where you're just out from what you're trying to capture. And as you can see, we've got the first water drop coming back up and then the second one is just about to make contact. When that happens, you know that all you need to do is just make a slight adjustment on the delay between the first drop and the second drop and then you're going to get a really nice crown on your next shot hopefully with any luck. And it is a little bit about luck in water drop photography, there's no doubt about that. So let's keep going. So as you can see with that shot, the water drop is way too low to the water bath. Now when that happens, what you need to do is adjust that first knob to make the first water drop bigger. And what that does, because there's more weight going into the water, it creates a bigger splash when it comes back up, meaning you'll get a much taller water drop. So okay, let's try that now. Oh yes, that is the kind of water drop that I really like, that nice bell shape across your water drop. And now I'm going to take a few more shots, make a few fine adjustments as I go, get finish my shoot and see what else I can come up with. So I hope you found that useful and it's going to help you use this system a little bit better. There is no secret trick to water drop photography and it's all a bit of trial and error and then a little bit of luck to really capture that nice collision you're looking for. The creativity comes from your composition, your lighting, colour and consistency of liquids and then the post-processing that you put the images through at the end. I also have created a video before about how to post-process water drop photography so I'll put that up there as well and down in the description so you can check that out as well. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel because I'll really appreciate that. There's videos going up on a Wednesday and a Sunday and I think it'll help you take your photography to the next level. I'll see you on another video very soon. I'm Adam, this is First Man Photography 